Hello Bakers and welcome to Upside Down. In today's video, we are going to start setting up our materials inside Unreal Engine 5. This is part 4 of our course for interior visualization. And if you missed some of the previous part, I'm going to put a link down in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's roll the intro. I just finished importing everything into the scene and uh, these are uh, all the meshes that uh, I have exported and as well assembled everything. So at the moment uh, inside, if I go, you will see that it's uh, very dark and we will notice that there is this uh, fog, which doesn't look like very realistic, like at least for uh, making interior visualizer, but these are things that uh, we will little by little uh, take care of. So uh, first let's uh, start by setting up some of the materials and initially I'm just going to import all the textures. So we are going to open the content browser, right click over here and then new folder which I'll name textures. The textures that I'm going to use because some of the assets are from architectural visualization packages and the textures, they were set up either for V-Ray or for other renders. So they are not uh, exported and packed for Unreal. Normally, if you're creating assets and texturing them inside Substance, you will have one diffuse or base color for your asset, then a normal map and a combined texture, which is the combination of ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic. These are for all the three channels on the RGB for the texture, but in our case, um, this is uh, not set it up like that. So the first one and the first material that we are going to do a little bit more easy in terms of customization because we are going to have separate channels for each of the maps, but I'll also show you how to set up a material that is created for exports directly from Substance. So uh, let's first go and import everything. I'm once again just going to drag and drop everything inside our texture folder and just going to click save so that we have uh, everything saved. You can see that uh, there's quite a lot of uh, different type of masks and for example for the tiles I have the color of the tiles which is uh, uh, this one as well for the wall tiles but uh, we don't have anything except the base color so I'm going to use some of the other masks in order to add them a little bit of roughness. So now uh, let's go and make the material and again going to the main content uh, folder and here I'll just make materials folder, go inside, right click and then we are going to create a new material. I'm going to call this MM which stands for master material and then I'm just making it base so this is going to be our base master material and we are going to use it for a majority of the assets. So now let's uh, open that. And this is the material editor inside Unreal. So we have the end results. These are the end results that uh, like the end node that we are going to hook all the textures and all the parameters that we need. So inside here, we can add different elements to the material so that we have different functionalities like textures or just some uh, different parameters. So uh, as well, we have the panel on the side, which uh, shows us a little bit of a preview for the material, how it looks at the moment. Since we don't have anything, that's why it's uh, completely black. But also on the bottom, we have uh, different settings that we are going to go in a little bit more depth once we start setting up uh, the glass material because the glass material is going to be a separate shader uh, from the default one that we will create for assets. So let's start setting things here. I'm going to uh, right click and then I'm going to search inside uh, all of these uh, subfolders, parameter section. So parameters are um, elements that we can load like different textures or different values for some of the uh, channels that we have for our material. Why we are using parameters uh, and not just drag and drop them is because if we use parameters, then we can create a material instance of this master material. And instead of every time setting up everything from scratch, we can just replace the textures or for example, tweak a little bit uh, some of the values and it will be much easier. 
Let's start by adding a texture sample parameter 2D. This is uh, the parameter that we are using for loading any kind of textures. So here I'm just going to make a BC for base color and we are going to use the, all the RGB channels and just going to put it inside our base color. I will copy paste this. Then the second thing is going to be normal. So this is going to be for the normal map. It's important uh, here to set it up with the normal map because otherwise we would get an error, but uh, we will get into that uh, in a second. Then I'm going to make another one, which will be for roughness. Metallic. Now let's uh, start adding some textures. Since uh, we can open the content browser here, I'm just going to use Control plus Space. Let's uh, select uh, this one and we are going to grab. Um, let's set it with our tiles. So we have it selected, and then I'm just going to click here on the side and assign texture to that slot. Now for the metallic, we are going to use some of our uh, black and white textures. It's uh, just uh, better to use such ones than a colored ones, since after that we are anyway going to have uh, black and white patterns. So I'm just going to select that one, assign it. Same thing, we will go for our roughness, assign it. And for the normal map, we are going to select one of the default normal maps. Let's grab one of those and assign it. For the base color, it's pretty straightforward. We just uh, connected it to base color. For the normal, in order for us to be able to control the strength of the normal map, I'm going to first drag and type flat. Uh, this will pop up a function called flatten normal. So I'm going to use this. And then what I'm going to do is right click, go into parameters once again, and get a scalar parameter. Scalar parameters is something which uh, is a value that we can change dynamically after that into the material instance and get a different result. So for this, I'm going to uh, name it normal flatten. And by default, we don't want to change this value. So I'm just going to leave it as it is and then connect it to our normal map. But if uh, we decide that some of the normal maps is uh, too strong, we can always come to the flatten and let's say put it on 0.5. This will make it halfway through the strength. Now let's make a little bit of space for the roughness and for the metallic. Just because we're gonna need uh, another uh, scalar parameters, I'm just copy pasting this one by Control C, Control V. And here I'm going to put a Roughness power and then the upper one will be metallic power. So uh, we need a different way of combining them. We are not going to use uh, such function. So for the roughness, we are going to use an additive. So we are going to drag again from the pin and put an add. This is our A. This is our B, and then this is going into our roughness. And we will do the same thing for our metallic. But uh, for metallic, instead of uh, adding, we are going to use a multiply because uh, the values are different for roughness. The darker parts are the ones that are going to have more roughness. And that's why if we multiply things, it will just get darker and darker, which means that everything will become a little bit looking like wet. Uh, while for metallic, uh, the parts that are dark are the ones that have the metallic, while the white ones don't have it. So if we make things darker and darker, it will just like become everything metallic. Uh, and let me hook that thing as well here. And we can apply. This will compile the shader, save it so that uh, we have everything saved. And now we are ready to uh, create a material instance and start setting some of our materials. So I'm going to close it, open our content browser, go to materials, 
then right click create material instance mi this stands for material instance and then i will just make first the floor tiles since we already have some of the textures uh set it. now you'll see that material instance menu looks different than the one that we had before uh, this is because uh, these parameters here depend on what we had set in the master material. If we didn't make any of those as parameters, we wouldn't have any functionality here. But since we did it, we have the option to change quite a lot of things. So uh, now the first thing that I'm going to do is enable some of the parameters. And uh, since we don't need the normal map for these tiles, I'm going to make it completely flat. So flatness will go on one. And also you can see that uh, the roughness is a little bit too small, like there's too much fine details here. So we will do uh, two things. First one is going to be to uh, edit materials uh, so we can tile different textures in a different way. Uh, but also I see here a small mistake that I made to the flatness. So let's go back to our master material. And I'm going to take uh, texture coordinate. So texture coordinate is a way to control uh, our texture size and the texture scale. Uh, I'm going to use a different texture coordinate for each of those. So uh, I'm going to make uh, like here and uh, tile and this one will be for the base color. Then what we need to do is multiply it and put it into the UV. Now we can copy this for the others and just change it to the tile metallic. Uh, let's just put everything by default to the all one. And here. Roughness and the last one will be the normal map. Okay, so we can apply, save it. Now, when we are back in our material instance, you can see that uh, here we have the different tiling options. We don't want to change uh, the base color or the metallic, let's just uh, control the roughness. So I'll make it 0.2, which you can see that now we'll make a much bigger uh, elements onto our roughness map. I'll also play a little bit with the roughness power, uh, just so that we make this uh, a little bit shinier. I'm thinking that probably we might need to uh, change the texture as well, just so that we uh, don't get those sharp elements and have a little bit uh, flatter version but this is something that we will tweak at the very end once we uh, already start getting some of the lights we will go back and tweak some of the values for the materials just to get better results what i'm going to do is uh, pretty much repeat the same process i'm just going to make material instances for all the other materials that we need in the scene and after that we are going to start tweaking little by little the values and adding lights.